First of all, tell me, uh, you obviously you're, you're playing a lot of music and touring and stuff. Um, I heard you talk about uh, moving from New York and living in a van. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, before we get into the music <laughs> stuff, <laughs> what, what experience have you had? Uh, what have you learned from living in a van? What's that like? Well, uh, we've learned that you don't need as many things as you think you need. We've mm -hmm. we've uh, downsized our collection of things a great deal, and it's actually really liberating to only have what you need in one van, and that goes with you everywhere you go. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think in, in terms of our musical career, it's allowed us to focus on our music and not have to need a second day job. Because we're li right. we're living in our van, we don't have to pay any rent, mm -hmm. um, and we can travel around and play shows every day. So that really changed everything. When we were living in New York City, we had Nina and I both had to have day jobs, so we were working a lot. And then yeah. music was kind of like it was split in half. Our time was split in half between our jobs and mm -hmm. and right. our off time. So it's right. al allowed us a lot more freedom to write music and and to. Uh, play shows yeah. yeah yeah so let me ask you about that what were you doing before uh when you were trying to hold down a job and do the the band thing yeah well there were there were two years in a row where trevor and i did this project called song a day in the month of may and i don't know why we chose may i guess just because it rhymed but may that's is the only like reason. <laughs> may is the busiest season for um the the jobs that we did in the city are survival jobs, so to speak. We worked at a restaurant and that May was the busiest season for that. And we decided to write a new song every day and post it online. So we, we made the balance work for us, but it definitely was exhausting. <laughs> um, yes. Just living in New York City at all is exhausting. It takes so much energy sure. just to exist there. Um, so to work just to pay rent and then also try to maintain your creative outlet, it was a lot. And I think we, we got a little tired of that. So we right. knew we needed to make a change and we knew we wanted to take our music to the next step. And that's why we decided to buy a van and then yeah. live in it and travel the United States in it and play music all the time. That, that, that sounds, that sounds like, yeah. like an awesome adventure. Um, the living in the van part, yes. not the writing a song a day in the month of May. That sounds terrifying. That was, I mean, I look back fondly on those memories. Um, and all of those songs are actually on our band camp page. If you're curious to what they sound like, some of them are pretty cool. Some of them are like, oh, wow, you guys were tired when you wrote this. <laughs> but, um, but no, it was or fun. Or you guys have no ideas. You're, yeah, you're, you're like, like pushing it out. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Let me ask you about that, though. Uh, so a lot of questions about your, uh, your songwriting process. Um, but then also, like, if you'll forgive me for saying um, gimmicky or like, uh, like the uh, song a day in the month of May, like, Right. And other promotional ideas like that. Was that like a thing of you trying to force yourself? And again, you just picked the month of May because it seemed like it would be a thing or like because uh, you wanted to write songs like that. Or was that a thing of, well, we'll get more engagement from our audience or like what was the motivation behind that? And what was think, your experience with it? Yeah, I think that, well, the motivation was actually Nina and I were, were on the subway. We were coming home. And I just had a random thought about a song a day in the month of May. Oh, wow, that rhymes. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Maybe we should do that, you know? And so that was really the start of that project. It wasn't like, how do we engage our fans more? Or how yeah. do we sharpen our songwriting skills? It was just like this random thought that popped into my head. And then we just kind of went We went with it. And yeah. it, it turned out to be all those things. Like, we, we mm -hmm. did engage our fans a lot more. And... um it was a great thing for us to sharpen our songwriting skills, but it was kind of like a random yeah, idea. Yeah, the, the first initial thing was just for it to be a songwriting exercise for us to sharpen our chops. And um, then it just, we kept taking it a step further, like editing a music video for each of those and then posting it on YouTube every morning. 
it, that extra step added a lot more effort. But I think yes. I think our fans really did enjoy waking up every morning to a brand new song, hot off the press, yeah. you know, yeah. fully tracked out, recorded, and produced. Like, wow. it was wild. We didn't yeah. sleep. We just didn't sleep at all, <laughs> all in May. <laughs> How, was any of that front loaded? Like, was any of that done before um, you went into the month of May? Or was that you all? Know, there, I... there might have been like one or two song ideas, but um, none of them were fully fledged beforehand. Yeah. There was always something mm-hmm. to do to polish it. And that was only like a couple yeah. of tunes that were like floating around. Like, maybe this could be a song a day in the month of May song, you know, like we could start. Yeah, but, that, but probably ninety-five percent of them were written the day before yeah, from scratch, with no prior yeah. anything. Wow. <laughs> Just, wow. Yep. Yeah. So then talk to me about uh, the amount of like uh, editing time versus filming time. How many takes you're doing? How much of that is actually songwriting <laughs> time? Uh, what What do those yeah. percentages look like? So we um, we were living our lives also while we were doing this project. So I was just filming this was, everything. This was during you know, the, time, the time when you also had a job? Like a, yeah. a, a daytime job? Sorry, not, not to call yeah. it what you're doing, not a job. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yep. Um, so, so I would just film whatever cool things I would see in the city or sometimes um, there were a couple of times we would like leave the city because we were going to visit family or going on vacation or whatever. It was May. And I would film things, um, and so that would be like B-roll footage, kind of, that we could use. But then other times we would plan out what the music video was going to be, mm. and we would film a music video, like, specifically for that song. Yeah. We had to do it rapidly, though, because yeah, we only had 24 hours. Yeah. To answer your question, I think it it totally varied between the songs. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes it would the songwriting would take the longest, and then the recording would be really quick, and the video mm-hmm. would be really quick. Or sometimes, you know, the songwriting would be really awesome, but then when I'd be tracking it, I'd have all these producing ideas, you know, and I'd want to add strings here and add, like, a a cool drum beat, and then I'd just get, like, lost in this world of production for many hours, you know? And then also, same with the video, like, sometimes the music videos got kind of elaborate, Mm -hmm. and and so we'd spend a lot of time on those, so it kind of varied. It was never really... Any the one second thing. year we we did the project, we had a little bit of help for the first half of May from some friends of ours who had some really great video editing software and know-how, and they helped us on a few of the music videos um, that turned out to be really great. And I know we're saying this now, and you're like, I want to go see them, but we actually took all of them off of YouTube. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they're not up anymore because there's 62 of them. And that's just way too much content that wasn't, like, top tier. It was like, oh, we threw this together in one day. You know what I mean? Filmed it on our iPhones. Sure. And, yeah. and and so when we when we were kind of uh, past that, because we did that in, what, 2013 and 14? Or 14 and 15? It was a while ago now. 14, 15, I think. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as our music writing had progressed from there and as we were um, making more polished uh, pieces that we wanted to share with people. We didn't want the first thing people saw when they visited our YouTube page to be like a song that we threw together in one day. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. so you can still hear the audio of those songs on our Bandcamp website. Right. Fortvine.bandcamp.com but, um, but you can't see the videos anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, can you uh, talk a little bit about um, your, like, as far as a brand and being a band and uh, trying to make all of this stuff happen? Like, because I got a lot of students who are trying to start up a YouTube channel because in their mind that means something. I don't know, I don't know what it means. But, no, it's, uh, I mean, that's very valid. YouTube, yeah. 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 It's yeah. very it's important. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so like they're wanting to start a a career in music, um, and they've got ideas about how it's going to go. And in their mind, uh, I think it is all art all of the time. And then there's so much more that goes into your brand, editing videos, editing audio, uh, charting, looking for locations, and apparently driving yeah. around in a van. So can you talk a little about yeah. what they could yeah. expect and and what the reality of life as an artist is it's a business 
um, there's, there is a lot more to it than just the writing music aspect. Um, when we were thinking, okay, what's going to go into our brand, you know, that wasn't, uh, something that came supernaturally to us in the beginning. Um, Trevor and I built the tree fort that we named Fort Vine. And so that kind of became like our image, I guess, <laughs> um, it was like nature, uh, you know, like this child, like I'm going to build a tree fort and, you know, hang out and be at yeah. one with nature. That's kind of our brand. Can I? Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah. So I think the best advice that I could give to anyone that's like starting a, a musical career and, and trying to start a YouTube channel presence and all that is that now, like in this day and age, if you're, if you're doing that, you're basically like, you have to figure out what it is that you enjoy in life, what you love, what your passions are, and then try to create a band image or your music around that. So for example, like we love to camp, we love to be in nature, Mm -hmm. Um, we love to write songs about spirituality and soul searching. And so that's kind of, we're not faking anything, you know, we're like being very genuine to our, to our interests. And so Mm -hmm. that's what Fort Vine branding has become. We're not trying to be anything that we're not. Right. So <clears throat> for all for all those future songwriters and YouTuber YouTube channel makers out there, mm-hmm. I think if you just figure out what your genuine interests are and then kind of craft your your branding behind all of that, it'll be, just be very natural and genuine and people will will love it because it's not forced. Mhm. Yeah, I know it sounds cliche to say, like, just be true to yourself. And, you know, that's really the the key. But, but yeah, even though it's cliche, that is so true. <laughs> that's, that's harder than it, it's harder than it sounds, though. It is sometimes, hard sometimes, you know, when yeah. you think, like, this is what I like. And then you might you might be thinking, like, oh, no one's going to no one's going to be into right. this, you know, but right. you can't really you can't really decide that you have to let everyone else decide. And... Right. Yeah. I mean, with the Internet. There is an audience for everything now. Right. And people can seek it out themselves. The music industry has changed so much the last 20 years. Um, so, so yeah, when you're trying to figure out your, your brand, just, just uh, think about things that interest you and that you're passionate about. And I guarantee there will be other people out there that will also be passionate about similar right. things that you are. And, um, yeah. yeah. Well, and the, well, and the, the thing is, that they'll tell you too what it is they want you to like. You go on your YouTube analytics, like every YouTuber does, every three hours, and like the video <laughs> that you didn't care about at all and is not part of your passion, then is like your most viewed video, and you're like, well, I guess that's what the world wants me to be. And then you have the decision of, is that what I'm going to decide that I am? Do I go please the audience, or do I just stay true to all these other things that aren't getting any views but that I really like? And then I, at some point, you got to pay your then, bills yeah. and. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is. Then that's you gotta thing. ask yourself why you're actually doing this career. Are uh-huh. you doing it for other people? Right. Or are you doing it for the love of it? You know. Mm-hmm. And right. it could get pretty, pretty terrible if you start crafting it for other people and not for yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of speaking of crafting, crafting crafting things for yourself and and doing things you enjoy, what are some of your most memorable uh, gigs, performances, or stories from the road? Oh, gosh. Well, mm. can I tell one first? Yeah. So we were in uh, Kearney, Nebraska, and we played in a horse barn. <laughs> we played a show in, like, the main hallway where all of the horse stalls are, and the horses were, like, peeking their heads out and, like, listening to us. Awesome. And then there were, like, chairs down the hallway for people to to listen as well. But we got to play for the horses, and <laughs> that was really wow. memorable. Yeah. Did they interject at all? Not really. There weren't too many nays in between songs. No, not even one really. or two. Yeah. But yeah, that was really awesome. fun. Yeah. What about you? What was your most memorable one? Boy, memorable. Well, we've played a lot of shows this this year and the last year because yeah. this is yeah. all we do now full time. So there have been right. so many memories. I've been keeping a journal though. So I think I think one my memories mo- in that journal. <laughs> my most memorable show is probably our tour kickoff show in New York City. Oh. Um, that was a good one. When we first left, we first bought the van, and it was like, "Here we go, we're mm-hmm. going off on this crazy journey," 
and right. it was at Pete's Candy Shop, which is this really cool, like, kind of small, um, like, railroad-style venue. In Brooklyn. A vaudeville-esque mm-hmm. th- theme, and almost, all, like, all of our fans and all of our friends came out to support us, and it was jam-packed, and everyone was, like, people were dancing on the tables, yeah. and it was just a really, <laughs> really good moment. And, it was uh, the most celebratory send-off ever yeah so that's probably that stands out in my memory Mm -hmm. for sure that's cool yeah it kicked off the whole adventure Mm -hmm. that was a special night yeah you know for all those aspiring artists and and youtube channel people just you got to be so thankful for your fans Mm because they definitely wouldn't be where you are without them yep yeah we would be nowhere without Mm -hmm. the people who listen to our music and and um send us their love all the time yeah, yeah it, cool. it really, uh, when we started to get messages from people that we've met on the road or, you know, friends in the city, you know, rooting us on, like, that kind of stuff really just makes us want to keep going. Petty, really cool. uh, can you tell me, is there a person or band out there that maybe not, uh, you're not trying to be like them or sound like them, but they are... Um, where you see your next step or where you would like to be just as far as what they're doing? Like, how how long mm-hmm. does the van thing happen? Uh, do you want a show in Vegas or uh, <laughs> a, a, a home in Uptown New York? Like, what? how do you, how do you define success? Is there a, a picture that you can give me of how you would know when you arrived? Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, there's this band called Balin the Band, and they're a bunch of siblings. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't. Okay, so they lived in a van, sort of, and toured for a long time, but they played a bunch of So Far shows. Have you heard of So Far Sounds? Uh, uh, yes, I have. Okay, so So Far Sounds um, is this production company they put on. They curate shows all across the world, um, and basically as an artist, it's great because they guarantee you a full audience and okay. the artist does not have to do any promotion for it. So anyway, wow. Balin, the band, um, did a bunch of so far shows across the country, got a huge following and now they're like playing late night shows and things like that. And they just look like they're having the time of their lives and it's so fun to watch their career grow. And I think that's kind of the direction that, that we want to head. We want to start, um, like gaining a little bit more of an audience, maybe have one of our songs pick up a little more steam and um, and slowly grow our team around us to help us with, you know, the booking and the promotion and things like that. Because right now we're doing it completely independently. Yeah. So, quote unquote, making it to me would be um, like continually making a living doing music and continually growing our fan base and um and continually traveling until we have enough money to like yeah. buy property <laughs> and build a house and all of those you know life goals that I we think, still have but. i think uh for me making it would not be playing a, sh- a vegas showcase but <laughs> no, i mean me that, that would be cool um <laughs> but making it for me would just be um being able to tour around the country or even other countries, and um, play our original music mm-hmm. to a sold-out crowd in a, in any type of venue, even if it's like 100 people or a 200-person mm-hmm. venue. If yeah. we could do tours where we're stopping at all those venues, people that know our music and want to hear it, that yeah. would be true success for me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're, 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 I'm hearing that you made it. I mean, we're we're getting there. (laughs) A lot of these shows that we're playing on these tours right now, we're meeting people for the very first time, and they're not coming out to hear our original music. Per se. Per se. Yeah, they're already there at the venue. You know, Mm -hmm. we're playing a lot of wineries. Yeah, there are a few. Breweries. um, But not nearly 100, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Not even close. So, yeah, that's the goal we're headed towards. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, And I've got got a lot of students uh, that have questions for you about... Uh, your songwriting process and because they obviously are trying to do it themselves and want to hear from every songwriter like what's the right way to write a song or something mm. um, something like mm-hmm. that so to definitely talk to me about the the month of May was that 2017? 
Uh, it was like 2015. 14 and 15, I think. We did 15, it two years. Yeah. Oh. All right, cool. So, yeah. A while ago. Tell me about that and then either what you learned from that, how your songwriting process has changed. Uh, I'll leave that as open as, as open it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is no uh, right or wrong way. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. There are many different ways to create a song. I'll mm-hmm. let you talk about, about that. I think... To encapsulate everything, I think the most important thing about songwriting is to remember not to judge yourself when you're in that creative space, Mm. because that's the most that'll stop you right in your tracks. If you if you start to write something and then you immediately say, oh, no one's going to like this or this is trash. Yeah. You have to to basically allow yourself to create the garbage and then beauty may come out of it it may not come out of it but in order to be in that creative space you have to be non non-judgmental of what you're doing and that's like the hardest thing to get over mm-hmm. as a songwriter yeah um and then in terms of of my process i think it usually starts off with uh something melodic on the guitar like a chord progression and then lyrics usually come secondary and before the lyrics even come, there's usually a melody that I'm singing. Um, and then the lyrics sort of fit themselves into that melody. Um, and that's just typically how I work. And sometimes the songs come together in a few hours. Sometimes I'm writing songs over the course of a few weeks or even years. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it varies the process. Sometimes I'm creating a session in Logic with some like drum machine and that inspires a song like right. the rhythm inspires a song mm-hmm. um but basically the most important thing is to just create and get yourself into that creative space and and not judge what comes out of you and just let everything come out of you yep. and then after the fact go back and look at it all and, mm-hmm. and decide what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep yeah and if i gave you the task right now of we got a commercial we need a song for that commercial in uh two hours we need something out of you. Like, what? What would your, what would your mind first go to? How would you, how would how would you, you get that thing done? Oh well, I would immediately if for a commercial. I'd immediately go to like, well, what's the product? Mm-hmm. What's the, what? Like the lyrics are the most important for a commercial. So that's that's where I would head. Um, yeah, just figure out what the lyrics are first, and then kind of craft a like. What's the message they want to classic get hooky you know? thing that that would a classic hooky thing <laughs> that would work for a commercial. I would. I think. Um, I think depending on what the product was and what kind of genre of sound they're wanting, um, we would we would either start with the guitar and figure something out like melodically there, or just open up a Logic session and figure out something synthy, and then just just try as many different options for lyrics and melody lines and catchy hooks and things like that. Um, and, it's always, and it's always interesting to he- see, hear everyone's different perspective because you, you say, you know, obviously you start with the lyrics first. And for me, of course, obviously you start with the chords first. Like, what's the mood of the yeah. thing? So for me, it's like, yeah. obviously you're going to start with this. And, you know, for someone else, uh, well, obviously you start with, you know, whatever the hook is. And then you build something around that. So it's just interesting to hear uh-huh. all the different, you know, yeah. ways of things. Uh, there are no rules, that's for sure. No rules. <laughs> that's the good part about the creative process. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, tell us where we can, uh, where students can get to your music and follow you and uh, support you. Great. Yeah. I mean, pretty much if you just Google Fort Vine, <laughs> then, it, you know, everything, it our YouTube, um, our website, everything is just Fort Vine, fortvine.com. We've got our music on Spotify, <clears throat> iTunes, yeah. Google Play, Pandora. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so yeah. A, a quick Google will take you to everything. Yep. Um, awkwardly interject into a, a great outro uh, and ruin it here when you talk about fort vine was there any um how much thought went into the the website or the name or the logo or the pictures or the you said you know obviously it's just you it's who you are but those specific two words two words that are easy to spell they're short um those all seem important Did, was there any thought that went into that or it just kind of worked out for you um, well, the fort, the actual tree fort that we built in Manhattan existed before the band name. Uh, so, um, Was when it, it Fort Vine then? Fort or? Vine is the name of the tree fort that we built. That's actually okay, the so. first thing that Trevor and I did together when we were like newly best friends 
living in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and so that was something that was special to us, was that place. And our roommate at the time, once we were like, let's start a band, our roommate asked us, like, well, if you're looking for a band name, you should probably call it something that is important to you, or, like, what's something that, you know, you two have built together, <laughs> like, kind of prompted yeah. us to say Well, we were, we were struggling to come up with a band name, mm-hmm. so that we were having, yeah. like, multiple brainstorming <laughs> sessions, and uh, yeah. that's, that's when that mm-hmm. happened. But in terms of the website and the logo and all of that jazz, that came over time. Trevor designed... Um, our logo the like circular um what would you call that like a a logo (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) Um, um and he just graphically designed that on an app in his phone icon i don't know yeah an icon i guess uh and but it's it it stays true to the nature theme because it has trees yeah i'll show oh it's probably backwards to you oh that's great yeah, so that's like that's the branding of our. Yeah, and that band. and that actually that logo came from, um, looking around at other people's logos, and kind of like picking and choosing little pieces that we wanted to take on for ourselves. So mm-hmm. I guess that's another good point. Um, if you know if you're struggling to come up with a logo or how to brand yourself, look at other bands that are doing this and have success and. Look at the ones that really speak out to you and then mm-hmm. take their ideas and kind of craft them into your own and just make your own out of out of those ideas that inspire you. Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to take inspiration from from other places and then make it your own, you know. Yeah. You're obviously going to make it your own because you are you and you're unique. So anything you do is going to be channeled through you. And it's okay to take inspiration yeah. from other places. We do that naturally anyway. So, um, right. But our website, we went through Bandzoogle. It's this company that um, provides a platform for artists to have a website. And they make making a website for a band incredibly easy. Yes, and you do pay for the service, but they also provide yeah. email service for you. So we do all of our booking through our Bandzoogle platform. Um, and we have booking at fortvine.com, which looks a lot more professional than just fortvinemusic at gmail.com. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. so that's why we go through Bandzoogle. And they have templates that are really easy to um, like move things into places. And you can have your own blog. You can yeah. put updates there. You have all your show dates posted there, photos of your band, your bio, videos, links to other places. Um, so that's been really good for us is that Bandzoogle yeah. service. Shout out to Bandzoogle. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks so much. Is there, is there anything else that, uh, we should have covered, but we didn't? Um, well, mm. we're going to be on the road for the next year. So we've been on the road for a year already. And, um, from here we go, we finish going up the West coast and then we go across to New York playing shows along the way and then we go to europe for three weeks we're doing wow. ireland the uk germany and ne- the netherlands and then when we get back to new york we'll stay there for a few weeks and then we'll head back to the west coast and then down the west coast again in october and november so we've got a crazy busy year ahead of us it's like we've been on the road yeah. now for so long i can't say we're just getting started but it does feel like we're just getting started <laughs> <laughs> Wow, okay. Well, yeah. for the, the third time now, let me ask you the very, very, very last question. <laughs> uh, for someone who is, again, starting out, maybe you're you know, going to go to other countries, um, where would you recommend they start to get uh, connections in that way? Or, uh, like, how, how do you go from uh, New York to California to Ireland? All right. If that's an so, question. Yeah. So, um, we are completely independent. So we take all the connections we can get and it really does start there. Um, living in New York was great for as long as we did because we got to meet so many people from around the world that all flock there, you know? So, um, a lot of those friendships that we made in New York have been really great in helping us book this European tour. Um, and 
Um, I'm originally from the West Coast, so I do have a lot of friends over here as well, which helped us book some of these shows yeah. over here. But um, really, if you want to book shows at places where you have no connections to, which are a lot of the places on this tour, we didn't have any prior connections, um, you just have to do your research. And it takes a long time. It takes a lot of time and effort to do it independently um, if you don't go through a booking agent. Because yeah. a booking agent's going to have all those connections. That's why you pay them. But right. if you're doing it independently, you have to put in all the groundwork yourself. And yeah. there's a great website called IndieOnTheMove.com that has – it's another service that you can pay for, but there is a free option as well, just not as much information on the free option. But um, it lists all the venues in all the cities right there for you. And if, wow. you, if you pay for the service, um, you get all of the contact info as well. So I use that a lot. It tells you what genres of music each venue accepts and which genres they don't so that you know, like, oh, well, they're prob we're not going to be a good fit for this one, but we'll be a great fit for that one. Right. Um, it saves a lot of time. But also a quick Yelp search, <laughs> you know, like yeah. live music in this town. If you're, if you're going to put a string together a tour, you know, um, you just kind of have to get crafty with it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, put in a lot of time and effort doing your research. And yeah. then you yeah. then you craft your, your booking email. You put your EPK together, electronic press kit together, and then you email that out. It's like a bunch of cold calls, really. And then, you know, for every thousand emails that I send out, I probably get like a hundred responses. And that's just, that's how it goes, you know. You have yeah. to you have to reach out really far in advance if you want to hear responses from mm -hmm. some of the venues. And yeah. yeah, and for everyone who's just starting out, I would say you really want to take advantage of your local scene and your local mm. support mm -hmm. first and really generate a a true fan base in maybe like a 100 mile radius of where you live um and really you know, exhaust every possibility that there is to play shows within that radius. And then when you feel like um, you've exhausted that, then you start moving out mm -hmm. to a wider range and start touring around that area. And it's all about creating connections with people and creating a, a family that mm -hmm. loves your music. So start yeah. small and yeah. just keep growing it. Yeah. That's really good advice. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure as, uh, as uh, people catch this uh, after we release it, they'll have some more questions they didn't send in ahead of time. Hopefully, we can uh, send those over to you for a couple uh, late answers. And thanks again yeah, so much for uh, joining us and give us insight on man, booking and songwriting and all that, all that great stuff. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thanks yeah, for having us. No problem. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> yeah, good luck, you guys. <laughs>